Well, good morning from Alderman Farms. Um, I need to pull up my computer where I can see any questions, and I'm a one-man show today, so uh, I'm going to have to do my camera adjusting and everything by myself. So, um, anyway, let me get on YouTube where I can have any questions. Uh, where I can see any questions. And y'all know this takes me a few minutes. I hope everybody's been well. Let's see. Well, y'all know I always forget how to do this. Hmm. Maybe glasses would help. Here we go. I have been busy. I've made my dough for the market. And, um, oh wait, there it is. Um, I'm fixing to put it up and, and put it into loaves. And so, all right, now I have to pause this. All right, there we go. All right. Well, thank you, Tina. I've missed making my bread videos. Hey, Incense Shop, Patty. Okay, I can't make this move. Hey Duncan, 1900, Leatherland, Patty McGee. I'm so glad that uh, y'all are joining me. Uh, oh, I can't make it scroll up and down because I just went live. That's right. So anyway, I see. Here we go. Um, I've really missed um, being live and doing videos and even making the recorded videos, which y'all know Tommy's the one that edits all of our videos, not me. So. Um, he has been really, really busy with work, um, and honestly, I haven't done a lot of filming. Um, after, I really need to get my dough put up into loaves right now where it can start rising because the start, the market starts at 3 o'clock today, and I have to leave here by 2. So I need to get my bread rising uh, right now, and um, so then what I'm going to do, like we've done before, we'll go, I'll go back through the, any questions, and also... Um, I'll have a little chat at the end. I want to uh, fill y'all in on what's been going on in our life and everything. If I can do it without crying. Anyway, so, um, anyway, I see a lot of people jumping on here, and uh, I'm glad y'all are here. And so, again, I'm going to go ahead with uh, putting my dough into loaves, and then we'll, uh, I'll chat from there. Okay? Um, one thing I, ha I do is I make, I have a little printout of all the different breads that I make. And what I've done is I made enough dough for six loaves of bread if I were making just loaves, which you'll know I kind of split that up and make different things with it. So uh, I have my scale here. I'm going to turn the camera where you can see the scale a little bit better. And I'm going to actually weigh up my dough where my loaves will be even. So I'm going to, I did enough uh, bread for six loaves. And I'm going to go wash my hands right quick though. Uh, because I've been fooling with all my computer stuff and all. Okay, so that's done. Um, anyway, so it's our Tuesday market, and we, it's, it's, it was a great market last Tuesday, actually. Um, but we usually don't have as many customers at our Tuesday market, but um, we do have customers that do want bread, and so I do bring some different bread there. And so what I do is I, I weigh my whole lump of bread, and this has been rising since this morning, and it's a nice, soft dough. And I'm going to put it in here. Oh, I'm going to turn the scale on first. And I, li I like to put the saran wrap over it. That way it doesn't stick really bad to it um plus it's i know it's clean all right this is 7.20 pounds of dough so what i do is i'll break this i'm only going to do one loaf of bread that's um that's going to take up a whole pound and so i only leave one lump in a in a pound size i really wanted to have all this done before i went live because this takes so long to do so i'm going to get my pounds pound of dough first and then I'll split them up into half pounds. That's what I do. I go from there. I do half pounds 
And I'll tell y'all that when I'm making my bread. That one was perfect. So I should have seven of these plus a little bit. And sometimes what I do when I don't have the exact right amount, I'll, I'll make that into a little mini loaf and give that as my taste for the market. I haven't been doing a lot of taste lately. Um, but the market this year has just gone great. And we've been so busy with the market. And you know, we've grown uh, tomatoes in the high tunnel and I really have been wanting to do a tour of the high tunnel. Uh, but like I said, Tommy's been working a whole lot. Um, and he, uh, and we've had all kind of different things going on and I wanna share some of that with y'all when I get through putting this into Lowe's. And I can be kind of anal about it. I don't know if y'all can see the scale, but I'm making these exactly one pound. And then I'll come back and make them uh, into my half pounds. So, anyway, I've been doing a few different things. Uh, this is my extra piece. I'm just going to set it to the side. I've been doing some, uh, been doing my queen loaves. Um, and... I've also been doing pizza bread for the market, and it's been going really, really well. Uh, and also, I have my daughter-in-law, Kayla, that's been helping me with the market. Um, and if you don't know, Corey, my, our youngest son, got married, and he married Kayla Britt. Uh, yeah, some of y'all have met her before on our uh, on, on here. But um, anyway, they got married back in May. And so she wasn't working for the summer, so I uh, she has been helping me uh, bake my bread. And she's learning, she's doing great. I knew she would do good. And she's so great at the farmer's market with the people. She doesn't, she doesn't uh, do it on Tuesdays because it's not that much to do, but she does do it on Fridays. And she's almost to the point that I, th I she may not think so, but I think she could actually uh, make the bread herself by herself, but she says she's not ready for that, but she's doing really good with that All right, I'm almost through with this and we'll get into putting it into Lowe's and like I said, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, Have this done ahead of time my time just kind of got away from me All right last one um, I don't see any of the comments moving. I hope we're still live we are 45 57 50 anyway um i want to tell y'all too we will be going up to michigan uh for july 27th it's the pratt family homestead uh hook nanny and we're going to be going up there um okay all right so Thank you, Leatherwood. All right, I'm still live. Uh, we're going to be going up there. Uh, July 27th is a hoot nanny, and so we're really excited about that. I use um, olive oil spray to go into my my pans. Now, when I'm doing my sweet rolls, I uh, use um, Baker's Joy. But anyway, I'm just this is going to be a loaf of bread, and I'm just rolling it and pushing it under like that. And I'm trying to make sure my top is pretty and smooth. If you do this too many times, it gets to looking ugly. So do it as least amount as po you know, do at least amount as to get it to look in that shape. And then I'm going to have four small loaves of bread. What I do too every week is I go back and I look at what I sold the week before, whether I sold out or not, and. Um, now, like I said that first loaf was a whole, a one whole pound. These are going to be half pound loaves, and then I, uh, then I take my little paper and I decide exactly what I'm going to make for the next week. Um, sometimes, you know, people may get tired of, say, my falada bread and it doesn't sell the week prior, so I may not make as many loaves of it. The same principle with this is I roll it, and it makes you the nice, nice, pretty dome. 
shape. I, I prefer this. Some people will put the dough in and, and push it down, and that's fine if that's the, uh, the look you like. And of course, it does make a for a flat across the top sandwich bread. I like the, uh, the way it looks to have uh, the little rounded tops. And you see, when I put it in here, it doesn't fill up the pan. Well, let me see. see I set it in the middle. And it doesn't fill up the pan, but as it grows, it will it will completely fill up the pan and rise above it. So, but anyway, I just kind of rock it back and forth like that. And see right here, it looks a little ugly right there. So I'll roll it under a, one more time to try and get that nice smooth top. And one more time. And see, you see how the top is smooth like that. Now, that's my loaves right there. Push those to the side. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do my pesto bread. This has been a great seller at the market. Um, I'm going to move this right here before I knock it off. Now, I'm supposed to be sitting down doing this. Um, this is for, for my pesto bread, and I do spray it with my spray. And I do, this is some pesto that I got. It's called Classico. It's really good. We, re we like to just to eat it with bread too. But this is how I do my pesto bread. I put a heaping tablespoon right in the middle. I tried to have all my supplies right here where I won't be running back and forth. Um, and then I take uh, a half a pound of dough and I start flattening it out with my hands to make like a disc. Let me see. No, back here. Okay. And you see my pesto. Just kind of flatten it out with the uh, like a disc. Thanks, Duncan. And then you put it on there and you just start patting it out like that. And I try, you got to be careful not to use your fingertips because you will make holes in it. But I just try and flatten it out the best I can in the pan and then I'm going to take it you can see how it's on there and then I flip it over and I do the same thing on the bottom and this one's not going to be quite square I was wanting it to be square but it's not sometimes it's square sometimes it's not but it still tastes good even if it's not square and I'll take and I'll look at it and I'll see I have a little bit of pesto I need to put in a few other places. People uh, buy this bread and sometimes they walk around the market eating it because it's just so tasty. This will rise up to be about this thick and so it's a nice bread. Uh, last Friday when we were, we were making it, Kayla was helping me and she, she had never eaten pesto before and she said um, that uh, she said that smells so good and so we had a little piece left over like that that little piece that I have and so we made us one and so then I put pizza sauce and cheese on it and that's what we had for lunch. I have to rinse my hands off right quick because I don't want to get this on my other bread. That pesto is a very strong flavor. Thank you white picket fence. I'm, gl I'm glad to be back. It's been a while. <sighs> Hey, big bear. I'm seeing a few people pop up on here. I'm getting, I'm working through my bread right now and um, making my loaves and then I'm gonna go back through the comments. All right, now I'm gonna take this. This is gonna be actually one pound. I mean, a half a pound of this is actually gonna make me two loaves of bread. This is going to be muffalata, jalapeno cheese, and pizza bread. Let me see if I scoop that over. Roll these out flat. And this is not, I'm going to pull the camera down just a little bit. There we go. And usually if I'm not filming, I do this over there on the ground and it's a little bit easier to me. But to film, I would have to do everything from the side and maybe not have room for my computer. So that's why I'm doing it over here to film. or video or whatever. I still say film. Oh, there's 
not going on with the audio. Well, um, I have a mic plugged in. I just turned it a little bit. What, I mean, what is it? Does it sound bad? Uh, or, um, tell me, Big Bear. Oh, there's a buzzing sound. Hmm. The air just can't. Did it just start happening? Hey, Pia. Oh, you can hardly hear me. Hmm. It did just start. Every so often it sounds like... I'm going to go turn the air off and see if that helps. Okay, I turned the air off. Um, let me know, do y'all hear it now? Okay, it stopped. Okay. All right, good. Let me know if that happens again. The only other thing I can do is unplug my uh, mic and just use the uh, my phone mic. I didn't put the camera on. Oh, it's still happening. White picket fence. Hmm. All right, so y'all tell me, should I unplug the mic and see if that helps, or is it okay? I thought it was my head <laughs> All right. Okay, yes, unplug the mic. All right, I'm unplugging the mic. I'm listening to Big Bear. And hopefully this don't make a lot of noise when I do this. Sorry if it's going to be shaky. Close uh, your eyes. Okay. Okay, now, how about this? Still doing it. It's back. Okay, I just I unplugged my uh, mic. Now, so let me know. Much better. I can hear you better. Okay, great, great. Thank y'all so much for letting me know that. I was trying to have really good audio by using the mic, and uh, I actually wasn't having, I was having worse audio. So, anyway. Okay, so this is uh, muffalata, jalapeno cheese, and pizza bread. And if you're making this for yourself, you can just make it to your liking, however you would like it. Um, I'm making it for the market, so I try not to go overboard on anything. I mean, some people like olives. They don't like that much olives. For Tommy and I, I would do more olives. So this was like a heaping tablespoon right here. And that's about what I use each time. If I look, think some looks a little lacking, I'll put a little bit more. There are some people at the market that say, oh, the more the better, but you know, not everybody is just loves olives. So there's that one. And then this is my jalapenos, and I buy them like this, already chopped up. I chop up my own uh, uh, olives. Hey, Sherry from 7D. Sherry is the one that I learned this bread from. Uh, she is the one that shared her knowledge with me, and I learned how to do this bread. And it's been such a blessing. Oh, I probably don't need to put too many jalapenos either. It's been a blessing to know. Sherry, I need to talk to you too. Um, I tried to uh, get in touch with you and I got a text message from somebody named Sherry, but I didn't know if it was you. So, uh, and I forgot to uh, investigate that. I forget what was going on. So uh, text me later. And this is the pizza bread. I just put like a, a good spoon of pizza sauce and spread it. You don't want to have too much pizza sauce on there because it, uh, it will make it hard to seal up and it gushes out and everything. So this is the pizza bread. Now y'all know that I used a half a pound of dough on this, but this is gonna actually make two. All right, now for my cheese. The muffalata bread, I just put mozzarella cheese. And then I put, I started putting a little bit of mozzarella on my pizza bread too. 
I was just using the sharp teeth, but I uh, sort of using a little bit of, of mozzarella too. All right, and then, then for my jalapeno cheese, and of course, you know, y'all can use whatever cheeses you like. So the, 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 the possibilities are endless. This has been, this is my favorite breads that, uh, that I've been doing, uh, the specialty breads. I really, really like, the muffalata is our favorite. Okay. All right, now, uh, then the next step is to roll it up. And you can able to see that. And I kind of pinch that end right there and then keep rolling. I guess this uh, um, this bread, it's good to pat it down too. It kind of helps to hold the cheese there and not fall, fall out. Um, this bread and um, being from Louisiana and uh, loving the king cakes gave me the idea for the queen loaf. Pia, do you remember who named the queen loaf? Um, I remember it got named on one of our shows and I forget what viewer uh, named the queen loaf, but one of our viewers named it because I, it's not a king cake. Thank you, Pia. And see, I, I squeezed my pizza sauce too far to the edge there, so it's not going to want to seal. But that's okay, because these are going to be cut anyway. Okay, now, let's see my cutter. All right, this is what is so cool about this bread. You cut it open. And you can see what's on the inside. And I can hardly reach my tray over here. Let me put it up here. I'll show it to y'all once I get them all on there. And this is the jalapeno cheese. I hope, uh, we're still here. All right, and here is the pizza. My phone rang, y'all. I don't know if y'all could hear that or not, but hopefully it didn't mess up the video feed. There's the pizza. And so, here is my pan. It's the muffalata, jalapeno cheese, and pizza. And this will all rise up, and then we'll bake it. Now, I'm not going to be able to stay on here long enough for it to rise up and us bake it. I'll try and remember to put pictures on Facebook because um, I've got other stuff I've got to go do to get ready for the market So that I'll do while my bread is rising. Sherry's also the one, Sherry uh, at 7D is also the one that uh, she actually gave me this, I call it a scraper, I think, I don't know if it's a dough scraper or what's the official name for it, but uh, I had never had one of these and it's just invaluable to me. <laughs> I just love it. I can't, I mean, of course I can do it without it, but I don't ever want to. Uh, I gotta clean that up good because I don't want uh, salt to get on my sweet. All right, now let me see. How many pounds of bread did I say I had? Seven pounds, so let me see. One, two, Three, four, five. Oh, is that right? One, that's no, three, four, five, six and a half. So good, I'm gonna have plenty enough bread. So, that's plenty enough dough. Uh, all right, so now I'm gonna do the queen loaves. I'm gonna do my sweet bread. And it's very similar to the uh, mozzarella and the jalapeno cheese bread. The way I do it. It is called a scraper. Okay, good. I didn't know if I just made that up or what. Okay. All 
And this is also a half a pound of dough. Uh, people ask me uh, a lot of times how much I charge for my stuff at the market. Um, now, I'm in a smaller town. Um, Sherry uh, goes to bigger markets than ours. Ours is not a huge market, and it's in a smaller town. I don't charge the same price as, like, Sherry charges because, you know, our just because of where we live and everything. But um, I charge, um, like, for my little specialty breads, I charge $3.50. Uh, a piece for them and this the queen loaf um, I actually charge six dollars for them so and I tell you they're just a hit at the market and you see I have all kind of different shapes of them so but it'll all roll up the same okay this is where I use my Baker's Joy on this bread because it comes out of the pan so much better. And I actually cool these in the pan. Most all of my other breads, I just pull straight out of the pan and cool them on a rack. But I cool these in the pan because um, the uh, it, it, in case any of the liquid has leaked out just a little bit, um, it keeps it in there. Instead of, if I put it on a, if I put it on a rack, it would want to drip out. So that's why I do it that way. Okay, so let's see if I have enough spoons here. I don't. Okay, I'm supposed to be sitting down. I'm gonna tell y'all why I'm supposed to be sitting down in a little bit. <laughs> I don't wanna get into that now. And I just put a good heaping tablespoon of filling right there. Right, here's that one. That's blueberry, y'all, and then this is strawberry. I don't want to put that too far away. And then this is apple. And you know what? I forgot to chop my apples. I like to chop them a little bit, so I'm going to do that right here on the side of this can. We don't want to be too big of an apple chunks. So that one didn't chop too good. There we go. And then I take cinnamon and sugar. Oh, thank you, White Picket Fence. Um, I got this at a Baker Creek, uh, the Baker Creek Festival in Mansfield, Missouri, two or three years ago, and I absolutely love it too. All right, now I'm gonna sprinkle this on there. Not, not too, too much, but just a little bit on there to give it some cinnamon flavor. I've got to, I may have to make some more of this. I have to have some for cinnamon rolls, too. All right. Then this is different. I don't start rolling at the very back. I, I fold it all the way over the top, and I go ahead and pinch that edge, and I'm very deliberate. I pick it up, and I fold it over. I pinch my edge, and then I'll pull this, too, and pinch it closed. Because you you want you don't want the, the, the uh, insides to leak out, obviously. Sometimes they do leak out a little bit, but... Your goal is to have that not happen. And then I'll place it right here in the pan that I've already gotten ready. Now that is blueberry. And my system is that I put two dabs of blueberry on it. So I know that's blueberry. All right, the strawberry, I'm gonna do the same thing. I kind of fold it over, pinch it closed and then kind of pick it up. It's not really a roll. I kind of pick it up and fold it over. And then I just go seal my edges. And the strawberry gets one dot right in the middle. Because when they, once they're baked, well, they all will look the same now, not just once they're baked. And uh, I actually, I, I've been doing this the whole market, but undoubtedly we got confused and uh, <laughs> did the wrong, put the wrong thing in the in the in the pan, uh, in the uh, little thing to sell it in the clamshell. And the person buying blueberry got apple, and the person buying apple got blueberry. But nobody was mad, so the apple I don't put any dots on. So 
that's my little system that I do for that. Okay, now let's see. Um, all right, I did the sourdough, the pesto, queen loaves, jalapeno cheese, muffalata pizza. Okay, and I still have a pound of dough left. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to do just another pan, another loaf of sourdough. I'll be right back with my pan. Sorry, y'all, it probably is going to buffer, buffer it again. That's because my phone rang again. <laughs> yeah, Delta Peachy, that's, I, I had to figure out something because I, I, I would try and keep it straight in my mind, and then, and then I would forget. And then I would put them in the oven, try and put them in an order, but then when I take them out the oven, they were in a different order. So it was like I was trying to peek in the loaves and everything else. Oh, you know what? This is a half a pound. I forgot about that. Hmm. What shall I do with this? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show y'all another bread that I made. Uh, and I'm not sure if I learned this from Sherry. I know I looked online. Well, no, I'm going to have to use a lot of cinnamon, though. Um, let me think. What can I make with this instead? Hmm. Maybe I'll just do cheesy bread. No, then I'll do that. I'm going to do another little loaf. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the indecision. Um, I'm going to make, uh, no, I'm going to make more pesto bread because that sells good too. Yeah. That's what I'll do is I'll make, I'll make more pesto bread and then with my little sample, I'll make a, a little pesto bread for a sample. That's what I'm going to do. That'll work. So, okay. But I don't want to set this down. Oh, I don't want to get cinnamon and sugar on that. That would be yucky. Okay. So... And that's fast and quick, too, and it'll be rising, because I still have to do the cinnamon rolls. Oh, and I want to show y'all, too, that what I'm doing with the cinnamon rolls now. I'm doing a, a sticky bun, and it's worked out really great. Oh, cinnamon twist. That would have been a good... Yeah, that would have been different, Pia. Oh, and I have done a cinnamon loaf like that. Hmm. That would have been a good idea. But anyway, I didn't look over there soon enough. And, you know, I thought about doing just my cinnamon bread, but I'm really not wanting to have to stop and make up the cinnamon sugar mixture. So that's why I changed my mind from doing that. And I just pressed, I just did like a heaping tablespoon of pesto. And if it gets around the sides, I just pick it up and put it there. And then this will grow up to be like a nice pesto bread. And then I have this. I can give samples out of my pesto bread. And I'll just make it in this little loaf pan. Actually, what did I make? I had made something for a taste, a queen loaf. And somebody was like, I don't want a whole queen loaf. Can I just buy that half that's there? And I said, well, sure you can. So anyway, so that'll be like a little pesto bread. And if I don't, I, I won't, uh, I'll, uh, if I have this left, I can make a little pizza bread with it or tell me I can eat it. Let me rinse my hands off again. Okay. So now, the cinnamon rolls. That. Y'all, I have everything all piled up here trying to have everything in order. All right, now this is cinnamon on here, so that's fine. All right, I have my cinnamon roll bread. I am gonna go ahead and move this scale off of here. I have my cinnamon roll dough. I have it back here. Oh, and I wanna show y'all this. And I meant to call Katie or text Katie and tell her to be on here, and I forgot. Katie Heathcock, um, uh, sells the, these are called homestead wraps, and you see it's sealed on here. Instead of using plastic wrap, I'm going to get her to make me some bigger ones to go on my dish pans because it's wonderful, and then I don't have to deal with 
Saran wrap. Saran wrap drives me crazy. But anyway, uh, she makes these and she actually sells them. Uh, her her uh, form name is Wild Magnolia. Uh, and if y'all are interested, I can uh, try and put... Uh, I can't, you know what, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how to put links up or nothing like that. But I can ask Tommy to do it. So anyway, uh, but she uh, she makes those and Tommy, to, uh, well, you know what? It's on our webpage um, under where the gifts that our, fr our things our friends make or something like that. Um, it's on there because um, for Christmas, remember that Tommy did that page for different Christmas gifts if you wanted to buy, you know, something you know, more original or whatever. So, um, anyway, so if you want to look on there, and they're called, it's Homestead Wraps. So, all right, now, of course, I've got, already got cinnamon and sugar on here, but uh, the, the cinnamon roll dough is a little wetter. And I went back and forth using just bread dough to make my cinnamon rolls. In fact, I made some for church. Sunday and that's what I did as I used my bread dough because uh, I wanted to make rolls too and people raved over them People actually rave over they rave over just the, the uh, this recipe too, but I have started this year I've been doing the two different recipes uh, And so it's allowed me to make more bread too. So all right. I Don't want it to be too dry of a dough. I like it to be a moist dough and it may stick kind of bad on this on this uh Counter. I don't know. I don't remember if it will or not. This, I just, this kind of rolling pin, y'all, is just amazing. I like it so much better than a regular one. And if y'all want the recipe, my bread recipe, and I think the bread recipe is actually for on a free download on our web page, aldermanforms.net, but um, I've got YouTube videos making the cinnamon rolls all the way through, or I have my little ebook, Sourdough Start to Finish, that's got all my recipes in it too, but um, there is a YouTube video of me making the dough and everything, so. All right, now that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. I've gotten... I just want to think, oh, I've gotten so much better at this. I'll have a day that it looks horrible. But you know what? It rolls up and tastes delicious anyway. All right, butter is what I need. Okay, so. About two tablespoons of butter, or two to three. And if I get to spreading and I feel like I need more, I just put more. And I like to use room temperature butter. I've went back and forth with it using melted butter or room temperature butter. I really prefer to do this. But sometimes I forget to take the butter out, so. See, I think I could use a little bit more right there. And I took another stick out earlier. I did remember that. And I guess it depends on how thin you roll out the dough. But this is about all I bring to the market on uh, Tuesdays. Um, I do a lot more baking than this on for Friday. Okay, let me see my time. Oh, it's 10.44. Y'all, I'm going to be running a little late for the market today. Because, see, this all has to rise again. And then I have to bake it. So, whew, I leave here at 2 o'clock, so... Oh, and the pecan swirls that I did, that I, try, I tested the market last week and I did some pecan swirls. And what that is, is just a cinnamon roll and you put brown sugar and butter and pecans, chopped pecans in the bottom of your pan and you bake them like that and then you flip it over and you have that on top. Well, I've, I've been playing with it, trying to get it just right. And last week it was good, people raved over it, but I wanted it to be a little gooier. So I've done it a little different this week and I've already done it ahead of time um, in my little pans. This is what I've done. And I've mixed butter, brown sugar, and pecans together and I've just pushed it in the pan and I've also sprayed my pans 
uh, with the Pam. Oh yeah, this is kind of stuck on here. Anyway, this will be fun. And you just roll it up. And I think I have made 18 cinnamon rolls out of this before. I mean 15. I do just 12 now because I've been making a very large cinnamon roll. I'm selling them for $1.50. My little pecan swirls or uh, sticky buns, I've been selling them for, I sold them last Tuesday for $2.50 because, you know, a lot more expense is going into that with the extra butter and the pecans. And I also sell them in the little pan. So it's more expensive to make them. So, and then I roll my seam down. <laughs> oh, white picket fence. Now you don't know what you want. Well, I know I don't want cinnamon rolls. I like to have cinnamon rolls for dessert. I'm not a cinnamon, I'm not a sweets person in the morning. Okay, I'm gonna grab my little uh, cutting board. Oh, here it is. Have it out. Um, because I don't want to. Uh, I will. It will mark up this. Oh, I want to show y'all something too. I think I have this a little long. Can you see it? Let me put that over there. All right. You can actually make this get smaller. And see how that got, I made it shrink up a little bit. So now, put that on here. All right, let me get my knife. And now I just will take this and I will try and cut it in half. I do have a yardstick over there. I've used it some <laughs> to try and make sure I get it in half. And then half again. Half. All right, so each one of these are gonna be three. Because three times 12 is, I mean three, <laughs> three times four is 12. All right, I'm gonna spray my pan with my Baker's Joy. And I need to put this on my list because I'm just about out. Okay, does so much better on the on the on this pan. Um, let's see, see, I can set it on top of there right now. Um, the cinnamon rolls come out so much easier. All right, now what I said, I'm gonna make three out of this. So these are gonna be pretty good sized cinnamon rolls. Also for, um, we had a get together at my cousin's house uh, for 4th of July and I brought cinnamon rolls and I made, I made the same normal batch like this, but what I did was I rolled it out a lot thinner and so I, these were like half the size or almost half the size and so then I made instead of making 12 I made 24 and they were just the right size they're about like that big and they were just the right size I think I could get more than that out of this but anyway um you know to, to eat rather than you know like like after you ate your supper or after you ate your lunch so now what I like to do with my cinnamon rolls you could definitely have put them closer together and let them rise and they would be giant tall. But what I like to do with mine is I smush them. I smush them down like this. And so it's gonna make a round, bigger round cinnamon roll. And it's still gonna be about that tall, but I, I don't know why I started doing this, but I did. Thank you, MG. I'm trying to look over there once in a while where things don't get too uh, far ahead of me. Okay. Oh, I messed up. That's right. But that's okay. I can fix it because I'm planning. I've got to do these. I'm doing it with the same dough. I forgot about that. I'm glad I just thought of it because if I'd have waited any longer, it'd have been too late. All right. I'm going to take my center roll up and I'm going to smush it down in there. Okay. Now, 
That's how I make the pecan rolls. I'm sorry, y'all. I forgot about that. So um, now as this bakes, this gooey will get on the bottom, and when it's done, I'll flip it out and put it back in there, and so the pecans and all will show on top. So this will be my cinnamon rolls for the market right there. So anyway, that, I'm just going to I can set these right on there, too, like this. I bet you I could bake them like that too. And that would make it a lot easier taking them in and out. I'll scoot this over a little bit. What y'all think? Think that'll work? We'll see. I'm gonna see how that does because this is that's a pain having to take every one of these little things in and out the oven. So let me rinse my hands off and I'm gonna go over my list to make sure I'm done. I think I am. Now, let's see, sourdough, small sourdough, it's definitely about to happen. Yeah, it's all done. So, I did that, um, I guess in about 50 minutes, 45 minutes, and talking. So, anyway, um, I kind of have been looking over there. Hey, Laura, I'm glad you, I'm glad you caught me live. I haven't been looking over at the screen a ton. Um, I've tried to, I tried to keep an eye on a little bit. Um, but if anybody had any questions or uh, comments or whatever, if, if, if I missed them, would you please repost it? Um, even if it's not, even if you're not the one that said it, if you remember a question somebody asked that you would like to know the answer to, um, would you please uh, repost it on there? I'm cleaning the counter up. Anyway, can y'all hear me good? So, oh, how long do I let them rise and cook? Oh, good question. Um, Y'all know, because I do the market, I do put a little yeast in my dough. And so, these will rise until double. Duh. Anyway, I'm not being smart. Like, that will take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. I'm hoping it takes an hour because, um, Mom, I got to leave here at 2 o'clock for the market. And, you know, it's not just baking it getting them to rise, baking it, then they have to cool, then I have to bag them, then I have to label them. So there's still a lot more work left for me to do on this bread, but it shouldn't take too long. I have a convection oven and I cook, um, I've got, I still have sugar all over the counter. I cook it on 350 and um, a, a one pound loaf of bread, which is the biggest loaf of bread, I cook for 30 minutes. The smaller loaves of bread, anywhere from 15, to 20 minutes, even my queen loaves are 15 to 20 minutes. I usually set my timer at 15 minutes and check it. Sometimes I may I'll roll, since I'm using convection and do it on top and bottom, sometimes I'll check it. Sometimes I need to switch my pan around and let the other side brown a little bit, and I do that. The cinnamon rolls I bake at 350 also. Everything's at 350, and they bake for about 10 minutes. So, uh, so I mean, honestly, I'm gonna be able to get this will be just two bakings in the oven because I'm gonna be able to get my uh, muffalata bread and all that. That pan will take up one bottom and then um, my sourdough bread will take up the top and I'll be able to fit my pesto in there too and then I'll just do my cinnamon rolls and my queen loaves together. I try and keep my sweet stuff together and my salty stuff together, but that don't always happen. But I've never tasted a difference if I have something my cinnamon rolls in there and regular bread. It's like the flavors don't mix. So I'm so glad of that, but I still try not to. Um, oh yeah, smell of vision that would be great. Um, let's see, all right, I said, uh, oh, thank you, Laura. Um, yeah, I said earlier that I have that little ebook with the uh, sourdough bread, and I also have lots of videos on YouTube that shows exactly how I make it with my recipes and everything like that. So um, I, I wanted to uh, remind y'all that we're going to the Hoot Nanny in Michigan at the end of July, and then we're going to be at Doug and Stacy's uh, Life Conference uh, at the the first weekend of August, which I think is the fourth and fifth. It's the Sunday and Monday. And so we're so excited about that. I'm actually going to be doing bread demos. We're going to have a booth. And so if y'all are in that area, please, please, please come by and see us. Um, 
So, hey, Smith Family Ranch. Uh, so, thank you, Pia. I'll tell Tommy hello. Um, he's off working today, so. But anyway, I want to share with y'all with something that's going on in my life. Um, there's reason, you know, um, I don't want to cry today. Um, there's reasons that I haven't been on uh, a lot, um, or really at all. Um, you know, it's been hard getting back into the groove of things. It's just like anything that you kind of get away from. It's hard to get back going. But there's also been just some different things going on in our life. And one of the things that I want to share about you that's been going on with me is that uh, I had had hip problems for years. And I had gone to the doctor a couple of years ago. And y'all may remember, um, thank you, that other Deborah. Um, but I had gone to the, uh, and I ended up seeing a nurse practitioner. And he told me that I have osteoarthritis. No, that ain't what it is. Oh, what, wear and tear arthritis. Degenerative joint disease, which, what, uh, uh, that's some kind of arthritis. But anyway. So, and so, that's sort of walking, and that's after that is when I lost the weight that I lost. If you can tell, I'll gain a little bit back. But anyway, there's a reason for that, too. I'll tell you that you'll know when I get through telling my story. But anyway, um, so, I started walking and everything, and it seemed like it may have gotten better. I don't know. Um, I was taking, you know, uh, some pain reliever and stuff sometimes, too. You know, just like over-the-counter stuff. But it seemed like I got more mobility. My, my leg is actually stiff. It's my left leg that hurts and everything. But anyway, so I decided that, you know, once, my, once Mama died and everything, I was going to find out what was wrong with my hip. And so, um, and we have, because we have back problems in our family. And, you know, your back could be out and it feels like it's your hip. But it didn't feel the same, you know, because I have had my back out. So I went to the doctor and I think... It was three weeks ago today, maybe four. I can't remember. I think it's just been three. Anyway, he did an MRI on me. He did x-rays too, and he just said, I do have that, is it osteoarthritis? Whatever. Degenerative joint disease in my hip. Um, and, and he did an MRI, and so I went back the following week and got the results. And he tells me that, uh, I need to rest. And I said, well, I'm in the middle of market season. I can't rest. And um, I said, I have a high tunnel full of tomatoes. And, you know, I, already, I was already training Kayla, so I'm, I'm okay there, you know, that Kayla could help me do this stuff. I said, I can't rest. I've got a high tunnel full of tomatoes. I said, I have 143 tomato plants. And he said, well, he said, if you don't rest, he said, I want you to rest for six weeks. And if you don't rest for six, if you don't do it, he said, you could be looking at hip replacement surgery in by Christmas. So, of course, I started crying. I didn't boo-hoo crying, but I started crying a little bit. And, uh, he, I, and when I told him I had the high tunnel full of tomatoes, he said, well, get a scooter. Get a walker. He said, but you've got to rest or you're looking at hip replacement surgery. And I was just like, I never thought it would be that big a deal, you know. And so... Um, I have been trying to rest. Of course, you, if you're noticing this video, hopefully Tommy don't watch the video because he'll fuss at me. I stood up a lot when I should have sat down. You notice I kept saying, oh, I'm supposed to be sitting down. I'm supposed to be sitting down. That's why I'm supposed to be sitting down. Anyway, I still have Mama's uh, wheelchair, and so <laughs> it feels kind of stupid, but I scoot around the house in the wheelchair, trying not to walk, um, keeping the pressure off. I, I rest a lot. <clears throat> And that's what I told the doctor. Because I've been, you know, I had gotten down to 145 when I had lost weight and everything. And um, I had, I would kind of jump back and forth, 148, 145, 148, you know, back and up. And, and I was good with that, you know. But I really would have rather been 140 and jump back and forth to 145, you know. But anyway, uh, I told him, I said, I'm going to gain weight <laughs> if I rest. And uh, he said, well, he said, try not to eat as much. I said, I eat a lot, <laughs> you know. But anyway, so uh, I have gained. I've, I have gained up to like 149, 150. I haven't. I haven't got on the scales recently, so um, I'm not. I'm not upset because I've gained weight. I know I can lose it again. It's not a big deal. But anyway, we've just been really bad and like pigged out a lot. So we're trying to do a little better. Um, so um, anyway, so yeah, osteoarthritis. Thank you, Duncan. I kept. Kept thinking I was saying the wrong thing. 
But anyway, so that's where I'm at right now, and I've been really, really wanting to do a high tunnel update. Oh, I still have Mama's Walker, too. I had sent it back to Louisiana a long time ago, the kind that's got four wheels on it, you know, but Julie found it at Mama's house in Louisiana, and so uh, she brought it to me, and so I I'll go through the high tunnel with a walker, so <laughs> it's really kind of, it, I feel, like I said, I feel silly. I've got crutches leaning up against the wall over there that I try and use, but crutches hurt. It made my, it made my wrist kind of hurt and stuff. And so I don't, I don't use them. I just rather scoot around in the wheelchair. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I have brought the crutches to the market, but then you gotta deal with what's wrong? What'd you do? What'd you do? And I mean, I look perfectly fine. I can walk, I can walk normal. So that's why I think it feels even more stupid to be doing what I'm doing, but it's like, I gotta do it. So let me look at these. Uh, uh, comments. Yeah, white picket fence. That's what it is. It's a walker with a seat. But I tried sitting on it and scooting through the garden. I mean, through the high tunnel. Our rows aren't quite wide enough. If they were just a little bit wider, which that's one thing I wanted to show you on the video, is that I want to redo those rows because um, we need them a little further apart because we have a tomato jungle out there. So, um, Okay, Pia says, what do you need to do for comfort? Well, uh, he said that I can sit. That gets the weight off of the hip. And I have tried to go lay in the bed every day. I have recliners, and so I try and recline real far back. And I have went and gotten in bed a couple of times uh, during the day. That's what when my goal would be is to go, like, really lay down in bed for a couple of hours every day. I haven't done that. Um, I need to. Another thing I was looked up is, um, hey, Christy. Um, is, is I want to do a comfrey polis on there because that's, you know, the, the name for comfrey is bone knit. And so, um, that's what, uh, I really want to try doing the poultry, com uh, comfrey polis on there. And I may not be saying that word right. Uh, yeah, the kids scooter would, um, I could push the walker through. And so that's what I've been doing as I've just been pushing the walker through and have time and Tommy's picked the tomatoes some of the time uh for me but you know he's working a lot and i mean we went out last night about eight o'clock eight fifteen, which it was much cooler then and we picked tomatoes so but the tomatoes are just about done i'm still getting some decent sized ones and able to bring some to the market so that won't be an issue and you know that's what you know with mama dying in april that was just um <clears throat> and she was of course sick in march too I, and i always plant on good friday or try to, or at least plant by Good Friday when it falls at a normal time, not when it's really early. But I didn't get to because Mama was so sick, and then Mama died. And so the only thing I have growing outside of the tomatoes in the high tunnel, which if you remember, I planted those March 15th around up in there. Um, I do have a row of okra by the high tunnel. I finally got in some green beans by the high tunnel, but it's just like one cattle, it's like 16 feet, I think. Or would it be 32? I'm not sure if it's one cattle panel or two um, of green beans. I do have a few squash and I have some cucumbers. But, you know, and none of it's coming in yet because I planted so late. But I told Tommy, I said, you know, thank God. Thank God that I didn't get, you know, a big garden planted and then find out I need to rest. Because Tommy don't have time to take care of all of that, you know, and work too. So, um yeah, Pia, I was thinking about getting one of those rolling seats, but I just don't know. Um, that position may hurt uh, because that's what I noticed before, you know, I found out my problem. If I was out there and I was like on my knees or had my legs real bent up, that's when my hip hurt the worst. So, um, anyway, so, I mean, you know, it's a blessing. You know, I kind of, I just, I accepted the fact this was a different gardening year for us, that we weren't going to have the vegetables, and I have been buying them at the market, and thank God we can afford to buy vegetables at the market, and we have a market to buy them at, but, you know, I, I, I accepted the fact that, you know, this is just a different year for me. I mean, life happens, and, you know, what's our slogan, where life on the farm just got real? Well, we're having real life right now, and, um, which always we do, but you know what I'm saying, but um, anyway, so, uh, but I'm, I'm very thankful I didn't get more planted. So, yes, thank you, MG. Uh, I would appreciate your prayers. Um, I'm, I am trying to be good. Um, thank you, Charlotte, Charlene, I'm sorry. Um, but um, let's see, what you, 
do forget. Yes, I, I don't want, uh, Laura, I don't want hip surgery. Um, oh, but I, what I was going to tell you, um, I'm trying to scroll up through this, too. Um, I, um, when, I, when I went to the doctor and he started, and I was, Julie, my sister, kept saying, oh, Patty, it's probably your back, it's probably your back, it's probably your back. And so I then convinced myself by the time I went, well, it's probably my back, you know. And I told him when I went, I said, I might be crazy, but it don't feel like my back, you know. It feels like it's in my hip. I've had back problems and all. But anyway, I got to thinking about it, and I was kind of hurting a little higher up, up there, and I thought, well, maybe it is my back. So when I went in the room, I was thinking, well, maybe it's my back. And I told the doctor, I said, maybe I'm crazy. But anyway, he walked to the room and he says, well, you're not crazy. It's your hip. I said, it is. And so as he started telling me this stuff, I started crying a little bit and everything. And then uh, he was saying that, you know, if I rested for six weeks that, oh, and it's called, what it is, it's called bone marrow edema, which that sounds big and hairy. But what it is, is it's bruised. The top of my femur is bruised. And I can't pronounce the names of the anterior and posterior something that starts with an A inside the, the bone that's at the top. It's, so that means the inside and the outside. It's like, it's like a bruise. It's a bone bruise. And, um, but the problem with that, bone bruises don't heal like uh, you know skin bruises do. And so that's why I have to rest it because that can turn into something you know worse and everything. So that's why, you know, and I've... I've, I've been doing, you know, my research on it and everything, and I don't want to have anything that gets worse. So, hey, Scratch Made Homestead. But anyway, so, uh, anyway, so as he starts telling me the news and everything, I shoot, I start crying. And I mean, like I said, I didn't boo-hoo cry, but I got real teary and everything. I was really kind of shocked that he said it was my hip. And uh, then when he said six weeks of rest, I was just like, well, I can't rest and everything. And he's like, you, you need to, you have to and all this. And then he said, if you rest and everything, he said, you know, you might get put off surgery for, you know, five to 10 years. Well, by the time I left there, he had said, maybe I could put it off for 10 to 15 years. So I think he felt bad for me. So anyway, I've ordered me some turmeric and ginger. Um, I may start taking some glucosamine. I've looked up the foods um, that are supposed to be beneficial for your joint health and for inflammation because that's what's happening in there in the bone. It's inflamed. Um, and I can't, exp I'm not a doctor, but, you know, there's like some fluid stuff in there. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's not good. And so I've been looking up anti-inflammatory foods and stuff like that. I do take naproxen some. And I know if Amy gets on here she'll fuss at me but I don't want to take that but I'm gonna when I get my turmeric and ginger in I'm gonna take that um, for the anti-inflammatory effects I'm not having a ton of pain um, some some days is worse than others but um, it, it doesn't it wouldn't prevent me from doing anything it's not that bad of pain that's what I told him I said I don't hurt bad enough to have hip replacement surgery and he said you'll know when it's time and I said okay but anyway so thank you P I love you too but, uh, so, that's where I'm at, and that's what's been going on in my life. There's other things that's been going on, too. We had a really bad scare yesterday with Tommy's blood pressure. It's been all over the place, low and everything, and it jumped up really high yesterday. And he finally, he was supposed to be doing some dent some classes uh, in the neighboring town, and I ended up having to go up there and bring him more blood pressure medicine. And, uh, yeah, that's a good idea, P. I I haven't done any Epsom salt baths. I'm going to do that. But, um, I'm gonna, uh, anyway, so he ended up having to cancel his classes all afternoon because his blood pressure was so high it wouldn't come down. And so he's doing better today. So we're having a while. And he's been on blood pressure medicine for 30 years now. So, uh, Moringa too. Um, yeah, I do need to do that because when I was looking at, uh, uh Duncan, that, um, when I was looking at that, um, looking for stuff, supplements, Moringa came up. And so, I've got some literature about it, if I could put my hand on it, that Jen gave me. And I had my moringa trees growing. I've had them growing two different years. And doggone it, I never did get them out there planted. So, I put them on there early. Uh, okay, Scratch Mate said, started using GT due to my plantar fasciitis and changed shoes. It got to where I almost couldn't walk. Well, see, that's another thing, uh, Leslie, that I've had plantar fasciitis and... I have it now, and I think the reason I have plantar fasciitis is because of my hip. Because, you know, your plantar fasciitis don't always start in your foot. 
sometimes it it's, something's happening further up that's made your gait change or whatever. So anyway, when I rest like I'm supposed to, um, my plantar care status is so much better. So um, anyway, uh, but uh, what is GT? Ginger and turmeric. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, okay, Laura, I think I figured out that if, let's see, is that right? GT is ginger and turmeric. But uh, I've ordered some, but gosh, y'all, that's overwhelming. If y'all if y'all have some that y'all are using that's organic and that you see that works, um, if you can send me a message or put it on here, um, because I've ordered some and I've ordered what I think looks good, but gosh, it is overwhelming the amount, the choices that's out there. So, um, yeah, Christy, it does all have, affect each other. Um, let's see. Um, 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 but I will talk to Jen more about it. And I actually have some Moringa oil. Some Moringa. Moringa, Moringa. It's not Moringa. It's Moringa. I always say it wrong. Anyway, that word that Duncan put up there. Um, um, okay, you should take... Okay, white picket fence said, I used to take that and it messed up my stomach. Let's see, take what? Um, yes, Pia, I've been, definitely been rested. Um, maybe you're talking about white picket fence. Are you talking about the ginger and turmeric? I row my own turmeric and ginger. Okay, all right, yeah. I have read, and see, I think sometimes they have black pepper in it too. And so that's what, you know what I ended up getting? I didn't get pills. I got uh, gummies to chew. And so I'm going to see how that works. So um, anyway, uh, oh, the naproxen. Yeah, I'm, I'm careful with my naproxen. It's messed my stomach up two years ago. But um, I feel like I need to be doing some anti-inflammatory stuff. So that's why. But my ginger and turmeric should be here Wednesday. So I won't take it. And I, and I didn't take it night before last. But I, honestly, after Tommy and I picked tomatoes last night, I was hurting pretty bad. And so I went ahead and took one. Um, yeah. Um, and naproxen, I'm going to tell you what happens to me, too, with naproxen. What's happened to me in the past, uh, because my doctor would say, take it for two weeks and then get off of it, you know, to help, you know, just inflammation somewhere or something like that. Well, after I take it two weeks, it's a, it, it makes me sleep harder more sound, then I have sleep problems. Then it takes me a while to be able to get to where I can sleep all night. And I kind of think that's what's going on with me now, although I took it last night, but I've been bad the last two days too and had a late cup of coffee. So that really affects me. So, but I'm gonna get off of that. And I've not been taking it during the day. Oh, but, I, and also my vitamin D, I've got to take that. White Willow is a natural plan reliever. Okay, thank you, Pia. Uh, oh, okay. That other Deborah, the black pepper helps the turmeric to work. Great. Cayenne, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I have some of my own cayenne that I could use. Um, yeah, that's. I need to do that. Need pe pepper and good oil source with turmeric for your body to use it. Um, well, I've been using, um, I've been trying to use just my coconut oil. Is that what you're talking about? Um good oil or should, are you talking about omega-3 pills? Oh, I just, I was overwhelmed yesterday trying to look for all this stuff, so. Um, yeah, exactly. Yep, a whole body out of whack, that's right. Okay, y'all, I guess I need to jump off of here. Um, but thank y'all so much for joining me. It's been a long time and, uh, you know, I'm just so glad that y'all are all here, and uh, we will try our best to get back um, on a regular basis. I have, we have, we've got a lot of different ideas about some different YouTube shows and stuff like that that I've, I've, I've wanted to do. Um, but, you know, it just hasn't, you know, it's just been, it's been a hard time. So, um, let's see. Let me say, there's a few more comments jumping on here I want to go over. Um, yeah, and, and, and yeah, let's say she always, try, scratch mate said they always try to add the black pepper to the meals, and that's right, um, and I don't, I'm guilty of that. I, Tommy likes black pepper, but I don't use it that much, but I need to. Um, anyway, uh, well, and, and, and Leslie, I guess I'm talking to Leslie and not Danny, but anyway, um, 
that's one thing that I realized that I can't stretch with this hip problem right now um, because um, it's so inflamed and everything. And I also have a bone spur in there too. But that's when it, it hurts me to stretch, like barely stretch. So I'm waiting for this to kind of heal up and then I want to get more into being able to do that. But I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, let some of this heal. Okay. Okay, uh, the chef lady for JC. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, let me see if I can copy that. She gave me a list of some different things to get. Oh, my battery's on 20% on my phone. Let me close that. Um, anyway, um, let me see if I can copy that. Oh, I can go back to it. That's right. Um, thank you, Pia. Um, yes, Leslie, you need to ask for prayers. Definitely. Uh, we need to all be praying for each other's brother. Br oh, I, each other. I can't talk. Um, Omega-3 is better. Okay, okay. All right. I just didn't know what exactly what way you were talking about. Um, okay. Thank you all so much. Uh, and I enjoyed it, too. Thank you so much, Darlene. Um, okay. Oh, but that's Leslie. I understand that. Uh, I'm glad you're with your mom. And we will, I will definitely be praying for you. Thank you, Patty. Okay. I'm looking at the uh, message. Y'all make sure if y'all saw uh, Leslie's comment that her, her mom's not doing well and she's with her right now and she doesn't have much time left. So y'all please, please be in prayer for her. D3. I know I forget. I forget to take my D3. Yeah, Kay. I know I've got a lot of foods that I'm going to try and be uh, uh, trying to put in uh, my diet. Uh, North Dakota Pink, it's so good to see you here. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, I will keep, uh, I will see the rest of the comments uh, if y'all add any more. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. Thank y'all so much. Uh, we love y'all and we just really appreciate y'all being here. And I don't remember um, how to turn off. And I hate to move it too much. It's going to shake. Y'all know I'm not the pro at this. I don't see the button. Uh-uh. <laughs> well, guys, let's see. We might just to stay live. Um, hmm. Sweet words. I really don't know how to turn this off. I'm just going to push that X button. And so hopefully that makes it go off, too. I don't know. Hey, BJ Stacy. You are sure you want to stop streaming? Okay, so that's the way I think to end it. Bye, y'all. It still says it's live. <laughs> you have to stay with me all day. Oh, I pushed that.